Well, good morning and welcome to the Morning Sip. Today we are here at the Mississippi Ag Museum. Why? Because we're talking about Pickle Fest. The show's going to be a big deal. Corny joke for you to start it this morning. But we are here. They have a garden here. We're going to learn all things about gardening, pickling, all of the things that you would normally think you would find out about at the Ag Museum. But we're going to take it a step higher. If you like weird pickling uh, combinations and candy and things like that, I think this is the show for you. If you're interested in those types of things, definitely stay tuned this morning. And we also have a few more things we're going to tell you about coming up. And one farm around here that is actually featured in a Hulu series. So again, stay with us this morning. But guys, if y'all could plant anything, you know I plant things. If y'all could plant anything, what would you put in your garden? Ooh, cilantro, <laughs> broccoli, strawberries. Oh, I hate cilantro. <laughs> hate Does it, it taste like soap to you? <laughs> All right, so you can pretty much pickle anything. Absolutely. Pickling is a long-standing way of preserving food. If they couldn't smoke it, they would pickle it. Um, we have pickle. We're going to be doing some pickled onions with uh, some peppers. Of course, we've got our pickles. Uh, we're going to be doing some green beans and a few other things out here, too. In fact, inside, we've even got some pickled eggs going. Oh, wow. So Absolutely. you talk about Pickle Fest. It's going to be something that if you haven't seen before, you definitely want to see because y'all have contests and all the things. Absolutely. It is a wonderful experience out here. It covers the whole museum. We have uh, over 90 vendors that are going to be here with pickle themed items. In fact, you'll be able to vote for your favorite pickle themed item with the QR codes. So. We even have our contest. We have a pickle eating contest. You have to be 18 or older. And uh, we have a pickle packing contest. So you see how many you can get in a jar? That's for everybody. Those are gonna be in our Spartman building um, at 4.30 and 6.30. Okay, so now when you're at home and I say, okay, I got some cucumbers, I think I can figure this out. What are like some key ingredients you need to pickle at home? Uh, you definitely need uh, your cucumbers, your pickling spices, your jars like this. You wanna make sure that you put them in your uh, container and sterilize them real good. You don't want any kind of nasty things coming out. Um, and pickles and jarred items usually last about a year. So if you've got a great summer garden, pickling or canning is a great way to preserve those things to save them for the winter. So now Pickle Fest is also an opportunity for not just kids to learn, but even adults to learn different things about the Ag Museum. What are some other things we can look forward to? Um, we have, like I said, the vendors. We have our education stage. We're going to have actually some canning demonstrations. So if you're interested in these type things, you can actually come out and watch us do some of those things. Uh, you'll be able to go through our high tunnels, see some of our gardens growing over there. We've got corn planted out here. We've got... Uh, cucumbers and squash, all kinds of things. So you'll be able to see a lot of those things that we will be using throughout the year as well. Gotcha. Can you tell the folks what time it's going to happen and where they need to be? Uh, Saturday, this Saturday, uh, June 10th, from 3 to 8, gates open at 3. It will be going on rain or shine. Some of our big buildings, we do have our stages inside, and we have vendors inside as well. So come on out, rain or shine. It's $12 per person, 3 and up, and we will have a great time. All right. And I mean, in your opinion, is there anything better than eating something you grew yourself? Absolutely not. It is wonderful. It's a good feeling, and it's really, really tasty because you can make it just right. That's amazing. So we're going to talk about Footprint Farms because they are making things in their own backyard. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's going to be featured on the show on Hulu. So stay with us. Well, keeping with our theme of farming and gardening, I want to rewind something that we did with Footprint Farms about a few years ago. And they're actually featured on a show called Searching for Soul Food on Hulu. Here are some amazing tips you can use, and it definitely helped me with my garden. So take a look to grow things for the first time, including tomatoes. What do we need to know as we get started? Well, first of all, welcome to Footprint Farms. And let me tell you about this tomato and what you need to do as well. You see, these are already gone to the last stage of actually becoming a full red tomato. Now, if you like green tomatoes, this is just right for you. This little plant flower is going to be a tomato. So when you look at your, your blooms of your plant, that usually shows where your, your um, fruit will be. In this case, your tomatoes. So let me tell you about the rule of thumb about tomatoes or any plant. Always water early morning before you go to work or before you go to school. Water your plants. The reason you want to do this is so that the sun can help to dry it because you never put the baby to bed wet. If you put the baby to bed wet, you're going to have a rash or a fungus and the baby won't be happy. So the tomato won't be happy if you water it too early in the day or too late at night. 
as they get taller and more fruit, it gets heavy and they'll be leaning over. So you always want to keep them as straight as possible so that they can grow to be as big as possible. The best thing to always do, if you see one like this, pull it off. You can't save it. You can't save it. You can't save everything. You cannot save everything. You cannot save everything. You cannot. So some things would have to go back, but it, put it like this. There's a reason for this. Mm -hmm. When we compost it, it's going to become, it's going to die so it can live again. That's it. Now we're at yellow peppers, yellow bell peppers. These are bell peppers. And of course, bell peppers come in different colors and different varieties. So this one is called the golden bell pepper. It's actually going to stay this color. So these, this is almost ready to harvest. But how you know when a bell pepper is ready? Sometimes they're not going to get any bigger. But if you feel it, and you can feel a little give in it, it's not ready yet. But it's still firm all the way around. That's a good pepper. Like this one. This one is firm. Well, good morning and welcome back to the Morning Tip. Today we are talking about Pickle Fest and we're here at the Ag Museum. They are showing us some pickles that they have and they're going to have a lot of pickles on display, even emotional support pickles on display this weekend. So you want to make sure you come down here. But in this half hour of the show, we're also going to talk about some very, very interesting pickle and candy concoctions that are being made and they're also going to be sold here. So I think you guys should stay with us. But as I send it back to you guys in the studio, do you prefer sweet pickles or sour pickles? I like a blend of both, sweet yeah, and sour. I like both. It depends what mood I'm in. Word on the street is you are the pickle lady and the candy plug. Yes. How do you get this title? So I've been selling uh, Kool-Aid pickles uh, for over seven years now. I started in 2017 and it, uh, just started off with two flavors. And from two flavors, it turned into 30 flavors. And so out of the creativity roles for me, I decided to start adding candy to them, wrapping them and candy. Wow. So, yes. okay, how do you come up with a flavor for a pickle? So mainly I go with the Kool-Aid. Um, I go with every Kool-Aid flavor that there is out, out there in, you know, the stores. Um, I added two extra ones that are not in the stores, but they're in other, like other states and so. And just go with the pickles. And then, of course, YouTube University shows me which flavors kind of blend well together along with me trying them in water. So if they taste good on water, that means they're going to taste better on pickles. All right. Yes. So now I just feel like we have to do something. We have to see how you make these things work, you have tahini here, you've got everything. <laughs> I'm going to let you show me how you come up with the process. Okay, so the candy pickle, you're going to get some fruit fr fruit roll up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fruit by the pound. Now how do you just decide? Like you just flow with it? Or? I just flow with it. I don't have no specific way of doing this. I just go with it. Um, and my main thing is colors. I love different types of colors. So if the colors look good, that means it's going to be attractive and it's going to taste good. So I always go with the colors and get the pickle. Make sure it stays on here. And you can start anywhere you want to start. And you just wrap it. Wrap, wrap, wrap it any kind of way you want to wrap it. Make sure it's on there. Mm -hmm. Of course, we got to open the tahini. We put it up into the little container. Okay. We sprinkle some good stuff. That's the kamori and the tahini. Then you go in and you slice your pickle. What do you enjoy most about making this? You know what, this right here is so fun because it's creativity when I go in and start putting them in there. And of course, they're going to fall apart. The candy is going to fall apart. But because the pickle is so juicy that it's going to just melt off in there. And so once I do that, then I go in, get other candies, such as the Gushers, mm -hmm. the Good Gushers. We open those up. I always have scissors at home, but I open them up. And then you just get your candy toppings to think the theme of it is, is to make it as colorful as possible. Wow. Colorful. Add it on the top of there. You just keep going. I do. <laughs> I, it, it is, it's packed with sugar. So hopefully, you know, if you're diabetic, eat it, eat it sparingly as they <laughs> call it. But you want to make it very colorful. Very, very colorful. 
contain this one. This one isn't going to be sold on No, that one's not. This one's going to be <laughs> in my stomach in about a few. Okay, okay yes. Yeah. But tell us how we can find so, the Pickle Fest. So we're going to be at the Pickle, Mississippi Pickle Fest on Saturday. Uh, we'll be there from 2 to 8. We set up um, that morning about 10 o'clock. Of course, look for the pickles, uh, the Gabs and the Pickles. Uh, we're going to have our tents very colorful. We got flags out there. Can you hit us with those last minute details? Absolutely. It will be this Saturday, Pickle Fest, this Saturday from 3 to 8, $12 a person, 3 and up. We'll have music on our main stage out on the gin lawn, not the gin lawn, the uh, Sparkman parking lot. We'll have music in small town, and it will be rain or shine. All of our stages will be inside, contests, uh, vendors, everything. Come on out. That sounds amazing. Remember to enjoy your weekend. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. If you have some places you want us to go, let us know. And in the meantime, remember, you're a big deal. We'll see you. <laughs>